So in today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through the conversion equation that you can apply to any ad, funnel, sales page, email flow, sales video, any type of sales process. And you can apply it and instantly see an increase in conversions. And the way I came across this conversion equation was I basically just went and looked at my previous six years in the online marketing industry. And I started to just look at the different patterns and have a look at the different campaigns, the ads, the emails, the sales pages, all of the different campaigns that we'd run over the past six plus years. And I started to analyze what worked, what didn't, and then I saw patterns of why it worked. And what I found was that my most successful ads and sales pages and all that sort of good stuff, they all followed this conversion equation. Now, it wasn't intentional. I'm not just some form of marketing genius. It was subconscious, I suppose. And I was following a subconscious pattern that worked in my marketing. So in this video, I'm going to run through that equation right now and hopefully it'll help you guys out and you can also apply it to your own ads, your own funnels and increase conversions and make more sales. So the equation is the CECE -E conversion equation. I know, pretty crappy name. Wasn't feeling too creative at the time in which I put the conversion equation together, but hopefully that the value still hits hard regardless of the lame name. So CECE -C -E stands for curiosity, education, credibility, and elimination. And you follow it in that order. And you can apply this, like I said, to ads, funnels, emails, sales video. And the cool thing about the equation is that you can apply it to your sales process at the micro level. So those individual ads and those individual emails, but you can also apply it to your sales process at the macro level. And it still should apply when you look at the whole process as a big picture. Now, I know that probably doesn't make much sense to you right now as you're watching this video. So I'm gonna dive through it and go through it step by step now, and it'll make it much more clearer to you. So the first one is C, which is curiosity. So curiosity is so crucial to have inside of your marketing, but not just inside of your marketing, more specifically at the beginning of the marketing process, because for most of us, we are trying to grab the attention of our audience. And a lot of the time, these people don't know who we are. They've never heard of us before. And it's our job as marketers to obviously turn them into a complete stranger and turn them into a happy buyer. And one of the best ways to grab attention is through curiosity. Now, I know some of you may have retargeting audiences and stuff like that, where you maybe not need to try as hard to get someone's attention, but let's just imagine if we're just marketing to a cold audience. So curiosity is key. So for example, in the first line of your ad, you need to make sure that that first line is as curiosity based as possible. Otherwise someone isn't going to scroll the Facebook newsfeed and stop and read your ad. And at the same time, Say for example, you have a opt-in page. Well, your opt-in page, the sole purpose of that opt-in page is to pique someone's curiosity enough that they feel compelled to give you their name and email address to opt in and see what's on the other side. And it's the same with your sales pages. In the first part of the headline, one of the best things that you can do in your sales page headline is to have a curiosity element to it that makes the reader think, hmm, that's interesting. I'm not sure what it is but it sounds cool, let me keep reading. Because again, the main part of the headline on the sales page is to get people to read the main body part of the copy. And it's the same thing with a webinar or a sales video, or when you go and stand out on stage in front of people, you want to hook their attention in the beginning so they continue to listen to you. And the best way to do that is with curiosity. So that's the first part, curiosity. So the second part is education. Now this is a key piece and I actually see a lot of people miss this out. Most people load up their ads, send out their emails and it's just super in your face, salesy, hey, come and buy my stuff, which sucks, crappy marketing. If that's you, stop it, don't do that, get better. One of the best ways you can get better as a marketer 
is learn how to educate your prospects, but educate them in a way that makes them think, hmm, that was great. I want to learn more. Let me go and take the next step. It could be to opt in the landing page. It could be to buy your product. Again, it depends where you're using this equation in the marketing and sales process. So there's a few ways in which we like to educate our prospects. Number one is to educate them on why they are experiencing a particular pain or problem. Now, the key here is to do it in a very simple way that is understandable to them, but explain it to them in a way that they haven't necessarily heard before. Because the education piece really is where we really get to differentiate ourselves from the competition. And if our prospect is struggling with a particular problem and they are frustrated by it, they're angered by it, they've tried different solutions in the past, but it hasn't worked and no one can really tell them why they're experiencing this particular problem. If we can come in and we can explain to them in a very clear way why they're experiencing this thing, then they're going to think, hmm, I've never heard it like that before. I've never looked at it like that before. And automatically you are going to create trust and connection between you and the prospect because you've been able to do something that none of your competition has been able to do. Another way in which we like to educate our prospects is educating them on the solution. So not only can we explain why they're experiencing a particular problem, but what you want to do is explain to them the actual solution to the problem. Now, similar to the point I just made, you want to make sure that you position your solution as a one of one and you want to position it in a unique way where you have a unique mechanism. Now, you don't need to go and create a new product that's never been seen before. But if you sell something that is pretty competitive, say, for example, weight loss coaching, Facebook advertising services, whatever it is where you've got lots of competition selling a similar service, your job as the marketer is to write the message and write the copy in a way which you can position yourself as doing something differently. It's all about positioning and framing. So again, if you can educate the prospect and educate them on the one unique main solution for the problem, and if you frame it and position it in a way that is different to anything else that they have heard of before, then they are going to be really excited about that because again, they've probably been struggling with this problem for a little while now, they've probably tried lots of different people to help them solve the problem and they haven't achieved that yet. So they're going to be very excited when you can educate them on a new solution in a way that they've never heard of before. And that is what's going to motivate them to buy from you. So now we're done with the education piece. Now what we want to do is add in credibility and we can do this in numerous different ways. So. One of the best ways to do that is tell your story and the results that you've personally achieved with your unique solution. Now, if you haven't got that and you haven't got a particular story that is relatable to the prospect, then you can obviously use the credibility of the results that people have received from using that unique solution. So testimonials, social proof, testimonial videos, screenshots, whatever it is, reviews, in any way possible, go out there and get testimonials from your customers who have had success with your product and service. And then you can use that in this part of the marketing process. So now not only have we hooked the retention, we've educated them why they're experiencing a problem. We've educated them on the unique solution. And now we've given this new solution credibility because we've shown or told different stories and case studies and social proof of people who were in a very similar situation to the prospect and they have now used this unique solution to get the result that the prospect desires. Therefore, it's now got full credibility with the potential customer. So now we move on to the final part of the equation, which is elimination. So now what we want to do is eliminate the gap between the prospect and where they are now and then the desired result that they want to achieve. Now, this is where we basically just give them the call to action and we explain the next step that they need to take in order to eliminate that gap. So for example, if this was being applied to an ad on Facebook, you would then tell them in the copy or in the ad video to click the link to achieve X, right? And that's important. You don't just want to give a bland CTA where it's like, hey, click the link. 
you want to give a benefit and the benefit is usually eliminating the gap. So for example, if you were targeting women with weight loss, it would be click the link below and learn how you can lose six pounds in 10 weeks or whatever the number is, right? You wanna frame it in a benefit way and frame it where if they click the link, that is going to be the solution and it's going to eliminate the gap between where they are now and the desired result. And again, it can be applied to any part of the marketing process. So obviously the CTA in the ad would be to click the link in the ad. However, if you are creating a sales page, then the CTA may be to click the link, go to the checkout page and purchase and achieve X, Y, and Z. Again, eliminating the gap between where they are and where they wanna be. And again, you can apply it to anything. So in your VSL, getting people to maybe book a high ticket phone call for your service-based business, you would tell them, click the link, book a call, and you can even apply it to your VSL and your high ticket phone call funnels. So the CTA would be something like, so all you need to do now is click the link, book a call on our calendar, and learn how we can help you achieve X, Y, and Z. If you want someone to take an action, you always need to make sure that you are showing them the benefit of what they are going to receive after taking the action. So that's it. That is the CE, CE conversion equation. And like I said, we have used this in every single part of our marketing process over the past few years. Ads, opt-in pages, sales pages, emails, sales videos, even phone calls to a certain extent. And I'm sure that if you are maybe not experiencing the, the results that you desire right now, maybe you've got ads that aren't converting as much as you would like them to. Maybe you've got a sales page that is only a a 0.5% conversion rate, and you wanna get it closer to two or 3% conversion rate, then I guarantee, learn this equation, study it, apply it to whatever part of your marketing process that you want to improve, and I guarantee if you stick to it, you will see results.